Hi guys, Ideas of Ice and Fire here. Forgive me if my voice sounds a little bit strange. I am a little bit sick. Now, this is not the type of video that I would typically do. And before I start this, I just want to let you know a little bit about myself now because this is relevant to the conversation that we're about to have. So I am a black man and I am left-leaning. So when I see titles on YouTube like SJW owned or SJW pwned, I tend to like roll my eyes because it's mostly just like some nonsense and it's just like it really doesn't matter. But this, I feel like, is an exception. And I felt obligated to respond to this article here because if people want to start Googling things like is Dune racist or something like that, then I want maybe one of the first things that they see to be of a black left-leaning man explaining to them why Dune totally is not racist. So today I will be responding to this ridiculous article that I came across last night by Noah Berlaski on escapistmagazine.com and I will leave a link to this in the description. And this article is titled, Dune's Paul Atreides is the ultimate mighty whitey. All right, this is referring to a trope basically where like somebody white will come in and just save the day from a bunch of brown people. And I'm just going to read to read through this article and kind of respond to it as we're going along. So, this is how it starts off. With the news that the new Dune film is in the works, it's worth pausing to remember that Paul Muad'Dib Atreides is the most egregiously, preposterously overpowered uber hero in the history of explored space. Okay, right off the bat, hard disagree. There are way more overpowered characters in science fiction and fantasy than Paul. Paul most certainly has a lot of flaws. I'm questioning right now if this person has even read the book, but let's continue. Paul is an unbelievable ninja hand-to-hand -hand fighter. Okay, yes, Paul is well-trained, but he also gets bested by Gurney Halleck in the beginning of the novel to show you that he is, in fact, not some ultimate fighter. All right. A human calculating supercomputer. Yes, Paul was trained as a Mintat. That is a thing because computers are no longer a thing in the Dune universe, so people had to make themselves better in order to deal with a world without technology like computers or thinking machines, obviously. Three, a genetically engineered male witch with a voice that must be obeyed. Okay, sure, but these are skills of the Bene Gesserit, who, by the way, probably have all types of different mixed race things going on within that organization. So the Bene Gesserit are a group of all-female uh, kind of space switches, kind of really intelligent scheming. Basically, they control the entire universe secretly. And they bred Paul Atreides for these skills so that they could manipulate him. So this idea that Paul just has all these powers just because it's ridiculous. Like Paul was set up in place by other people, uh, specifically his mother who disobeyed the Bene Gesserit and had him instead of a little girl who they were planning on having in the next uh, line. So the fact that Paul has all these powers isn't just because he is him, it's because of the people that have the people behind him. All right, let's continue. A seer with the ability to predict the future. Yes, he can predict the future, but not right off the bat. It is a process that has to develop. A matchless military strategist that is arguable. He is great because he was trained by some of the best. Uh, the chosen one of multiple interlocking prophecies. Okay, this is, this is a thing. Paul is not the chosen one. This shows me that you don't understand the book. Paul is absolutely not the chosen one. That, that sisterhood that I mentioned earlier, and by the way, if you watch this channel all the time, I'm talking about this in a way so that I can describe it to people that, that, that have not read Dune. And by the way, I'm probably not going to edit this as much as my typical videos. But if you've read Dune, then you know that the Bene Gesserit Sisterhood set up this thing called the Missionera Protectiva, which was religious seeding. They went to the planet of Arrakis hundreds of years before Paul Atreides was even born and set it up. Put these prophecies in place so that if anybody among them ever needed to use these prophecies to manipulate the people they could so it doesn't have to do with paul being special it has it has to do with the Bene Gesserit sisterhood manipulating everything that so that someone could step in and use these people whenever they wanted Ugh. and all of the above 
He probably shits gold too while followers spring up where he walks. Why the hell not? And that was just something that they threw in just to be, I don't know. I think they thought that was funny when they were writing this. All right, let's continue reading this stupid article. Superman has super breath, even super hypnosis in some iterations. But even when he's muscling planets around, he looks like a pallet also ran next to Paul, who spends his days ruling the universe, not foiling bank robberies. No wonder everyone in Dune is always staring at Paul open mouth and thinking about how awesome he is, even Jessica Paul's mother who is overwhelmed, musing about how she's trained his intelligence. But now she found herself fearful of it. Paul is amazing. Paul is terrifying. Be amazed and terrified reader. You know what Frank Herbert said when he was asked why he wrote Dune? He said, I wrote the Dune saga because I had this idea that charismatic leaders ought to come with a warning label, maybe dangerous to your health. The entire purpose of Frank Herbert writing this novel is to expose the fact that charismatic leaders aren't necessarily a great thing. And it's so funny reading this article because Noah, this idiot Noah, clearly, clearly missed that entirely. But let's just keep going because this gets so much worse. But why is Paul so ridiculously amazing and terrifying? The answer is pretty straightforward. It's because he's white. It's because he's white. That's what this says. It's because he's, it's because he's white. Okay, okay, explain to me this. Then why is Paul's son, Leto Atreides, who is half Fremen, uh, even more powerful than Paul? Way, way more power. If you, if you, if you think Paul is overpowered, then what do you feel about Leto? Who is half Fremen? So Leto isn't even white. So what can you say about that? And even Leto says to his father Paul later on in Children of Dune, it's a shame you weren't truly Fremen father. So what do you have to say about that? Hmm? Is, that because, is it because Leto's white? But he's not, though. He's half Fremen. He's a Fremen. So what do you got to say about that, Noah? I don't, I don't understand what Paul's quote-unquote whiteness has to do with anything, especially when Frank Herbert really doesn't do that much describing of what people really look like. I mean, I'd have to comb through the books again to be certain, but there could be characters of many different races and we'd never even know it because Frank Herbert doesn't spend a lot of time describing hair color and eye color and skin color. He does it sometimes, but not, not that often. So for you to say that Paul has these powers because he's white and ignore everything in that book that totally explains exactly why Paul is the way he is, his genetics, his training for a specific purpose so that the Bene Gesserit could manipulate the universe. The Bene Gesserit, okay, let's get back on that. They've been doing this for thousands of years, breeding people. And do you know why? For one single goal, to create somebody that they could use to manipulate the people of the universe. Of course this person would be exceptionally skilled. Why, why, why wouldn't they be? It's not because he's white. I don't see how you can say that. It, it's so frustrating to sit here and read this. But let's continue. Dune is basically a long tripped out, ecstatically bloated reiteration of the mighty whitey trope. A mighty whitey is a, God, this is so stupid. A mighty whitey is a European or white character who adopts the culture of indigenous people, becoming their king and gaining near mystical powers along the way. Uh, he, gave, he goes on the name, a bunch of other examples and including um freaking c-3po from star wars and c-3po is the freaking gold robot so like i don't even know star wars that well he's not even white he's, he's freaking gold so like that does how does that count and ewoks they're they're these they're robots and fucking aliens are you kidding me are you kidding me not everything is about race not everything is about race shit and this is coming this is coming from a black guy that lives in the south that has been followed around in stores that knows what it's like to experience real racism so it's so frustrating to me when people of color just, just uh, do this cuz it's damaging it's damaging when we experience real racism that people point to things like this and make such a big deal out of it and then when something real happens, no one believes it. It's like the boy who cried wolf. Let's see if we can get through this. It just keeps going on and on and on, more and more drivel. 
Dune is set in the far future, but Frank Herbert wasn't coy about drawing parallels with Earth-bound colonial narratives. Paul is a noble duke from a planet with a temperate climate. Though it's in the far future, he's associated with a European-style noble tradition. He's also the product of centuries-long breeding experiments, so he's effectively a perfect eugenic experiment. He goes to Arrakis, a desert planet whose inhabitants, the Fremen, are persistently linked to the Arabs. Their culture includes both Hajj and Jihad. Uh, Noah just goes on here to compare the Fremen to the Arabs, which we all already know. If you want a better comparison, go watch my video on my channel that I did on the Fremen, rather than reading this stupid article. Uh, they go on to talk about the analog between oil and spice, which is something that I've covered as well. But let's skip down a couple paragraphs to where it actually gets uh, interesting again. All right, so Noah says, Paul's divinity and power comes from his ability to capitalize on the resources and pain of others. On the surface, mighty whitey characters are superior because of their whiteness, but dig a little deeper and their powers are borrowed or more accurately stolen. They are godlike because they've appropriated the labor and wealth of others. Paul claims to be racked with guilt because he sees the future, which leads him, which leads the Fremen in a path of bloody destruction across the universe, but, he, but really the guilt is for his present glory, built on blood and deceit that the story won't and can't quite acknowledge. I call goddamn shenanigans. Noah is acting like Dune just presents Paul as like some glorious, glorious savior hero and does nothing to acknowledge the horror of what actually took place here. I'm glad you picked up on, you know, Paul capitalizing on the resources and pain of the Fremen because that's kind of... Mm, I don't know the entire fucking point of the series. How thick can you get, Noah? So people that have watched this channel, how many times have I said in Dune Talk videos that Paul is not the hero? Don't look at Paul as the hero. Mm. Okay, so yeah, I don't really need to talk about this anymore. I feel like you guys get the point. I don't want to like stutter and stumble over this anymore because I'm just so frustrated by it. But guys, don't bother commenting on this guy's article. Don't give him the attention. I heard that he just deletes comments of anyone that disagrees with him anyways. So if you have grievances against Noah, leave what you have to say to him in the comment section here. Please stay civil. Please um, give your own thoughts. I just thought I needed to make this video just because I know a lot of people in the Doom community are watching my videos now and I kind of just felt an obligation to add my own voice to this and to speak about this now at this important time for the fandom because the movies are about to be made and that is no doubt the reason that Noah decided to make this article at this point. Um, this guy obviously has some issues, some problems, um, but Dune is a fantastic book. I think that anyone, regardless of your race or gender or anything, can get into Dune and can learn great things about it, just about human nature and just the nature of governments and human societies. And I think Dune is just a fantastic book about social engineering and just like all these things combined. And reading it is an entire experience that will might change the way you think about a lot of things. And it certainly did to me. And it's just a shame to see someone just try and crap all over such a masterful work of classic fiction like this and I just have to stand in and say something and I hope this didn't go on for too long but thank you guys for listening peace out